G'day everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers National Public Cyclone Update today the 9th of March 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, the scientific team that we trust when measurements matter. No prizes for noticing that all hell is about to break loose in the northeastern Coral Sea, but firstly let's have a quick look here in the southeast Indian Ocean. We've got a tropical low that is on the first signs of forming here uh, in that swirly rotating cloud mass there. Now that system is expected to possibly move to the south or expected to move to the south southwest and possibly threaten the West Pilbara and Gascoyne coastline into the future. Maybe even get as far south as the southwest parts of WA. We'll talk briefly about that one. Over to the northeast and here it is. All hell is breaking loose in the Coral Sea. You can see here in this massive cloud we have a new weak low developing out here off the southeastern tip of PNG, the southern tip of PNG. Over to the further to the east we have tropical cyclone Pam. The eighth warning issued by the Bureau of Meteorology in Fiji. We see that Tropical Cyclone Pam was named at 4 p.m. at Queensland time today. Tropical Cyclone Pam is expected to deepen fairly slowly over the next few days because there's a lot of massive convection there and it's going to take a little bit of while to really wind up and get itself together and get itself going. But once it does that, we're expecting it still to become a C5 system. At this stage, the system is expected to pass somewhere to the near east of Vanuatu and to to the west of Fiji. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that track continues to, to show signs of coming, coming to fruition. However, take a look at this error margin here. We have an error margin of 700 kilometers uh, between pretty much the western to the central and then central to the eastern. So we're, we're looking at it in two to three days time, we're looking at an error margin of over 12 to 1400 kilometers as to where the system could lie. You see here, we've got an error margin that's going as far south as a villa or, or just to the east here of villa in New Cal, New Cal, villa in Vanuatu. And yet we've got error margins that have it still remaining well to the west and well to the east further away from that. So really folks, the, the direction is not a high confidence direction. We know it's generally going to track southwards, but that op that opens up a hell of a lot of opportunities here for a crossing right over Vanuatu and, a, and a, a track closer to Fiji. So all we can tell you right now, it's expected to track generally southwards and the ensemble mean, the ensemble member mean is to track exactly where the Met Bureau from Fiji have put it, which is just to the east here of Vanuatu. Very similar track forecast here from the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre, which has just issued their first advisory on the system. Uh, they haven't actually labelled the actual name of it. They've still called it 17. It will be called PAM. But we can see here the system is expected to deepen, getting up to about 120 knots sustained winds, which is around about that 200 kilometre an hour mark, with gusts up to around about 280 kilometres an hour, which is just under the threshold for a 5, but uh, is still a very significant 4. Don't be surprised if that gets bumped up just a little bit into a 5 range as the system tracks between Fiji and Vanuatu. Another thing here to note is the entire error margin here is still very, very large, even out to days three and four. We see a huge error margin. The system could be lying as far east as Fiji and as far west as Vanuatu. So just uh, be aware that even though this is the track at the moment, it can shift west and it can shift east from there. Alrighty, the Bureau of Meteorology in Queensland have updated their tropical cyclone outlook and have given this a high chance of development into a tropical cyclone. Not the Vanuatu system, not tropical cyclone PAM. This is the new low, a new low that has formed over the northwest coral sea and it will track towards, slowly towards, the coast. Let's go through some track and intensity forecasts here. This is from the UK Met model and what we have here is the system tracking to the west making landfall just to the north of Cooktown and then tracking back to the east and intensifying into a Category 3 or 4 tropical cyclone as it tracks eastward. So we've got a system that's located at some stage between 950 and 960 hectopascals on the 15th of March. So you can see here the expected landfall time is sometime between the 11th and 13th of March. It's not very long away, is it? And uh, that's why at Oz Cyclone Chasers, we're not convinced of a landfall just yet, and that's why we're staying on alert, and we haven't upgraded our status to planning phase just yet. 
Not only that, but the amount of rainfall located in this area will make it very difficult for us to get home if indeed the system does something crazy on the way back out here to the southeast and gets too close to the coast. Uh, we won't have a chance to play at it later. Uh, so we would only be chasing maybe a one or maybe a very weak two and then get bogged up there for a couple of weeks is not the ideal situation for us as a chase team. The GFS forecast model is an overly aggressive one and it tracks it to the west in a couple of days and then just quickly moves it very, very quickly out here to the southeast and off the coast of New Caledonia by the 16th. Now, this seems to be a fairly overly aggressive solution to the east and we would not expect it to move this quickly if it was to move southeast and east-southeast away from Queensland. We would expect it to do so a little bit more slowly. We would expect a more pronounced westward motion of the system and we would expect it to get a lot closer closer to the coast than what the GFS is hinting at here. Looking at this, uh, the actual low pressure system on satellite, you can see it here, fairly decent rotation there, not too much in the way of deep convection right around its centre, but there is a, certainly a cir circulation centre there at a approximately 12 or 13 degrees south and 151 to 152 degrees east, tracking very slowly in a westerly direction. Looking at the higher resolution access regional model, we can see here that the system is tracking, this is thanks to weatherzone.com.au by the way, uh, we can see the system tracking very close to Princess Charlotte Bay and if we zoom just into Queensland there and just have a, a little bit of a closer look at it, uh, you can see here just over Cape Melville to Princess Charlotte Bay area, not really clear as to whether it makes a landfall or not, but I don't think it really matters being, uh, being there, uh, being there and thereabouts, so within 50 kilometres or so. Now, on a Thursday, on this particular guidance, it does show a landfall, but, uh, you know, the the probabilities at the moment, probably around 60-40, 60% chance of landfall, 40% chance of no landfall. From us, from Chase perspective here, this is a no-go zone. We can't we can't get into this region. The, the roads are dirt roads, and it's simply too wet. We just can't get there. So this would be an absolutely 0% zero, zero chance for a chase for us. The interesting thing to note, though, is there, are, there will be some fairly heavy rainfall coming onto the coast. So if we just go back a little bit here to 24 hours' time, we can see that by tomorrow morning, very, very little rainfall along the Queensland coast. Then as we go towards 10 a.m. Tuesday to 10 a.m. Wednesday, we can see this purple splotching here, 100 plus millimetres possible across the wet tropics region of Queensland. And, you know, 20 to, 20 to 30 mils in the Townsville area. And then extending further to the south, we see rainfalls taper off. Uh, but overall, folks, very, very heavy rainfall on that coastal strip with this southeast to northeast convergence zone. As we go from Wednesday to Thursday, we can see very heavy rainfall once again on that coastal strip as well as the coastal ranges here of the wet tropics. So anywhere north of Townsville is the area that we would be looking for for that heavy rain. Now, the... the further inland this goes and the further south it goes, the more rainfall we get along that populated part of the east coast. Uh, if it stays offshore like the GFS forecast model, then you'll get bugger all rain on the east Queensland coast outside of that Cairns to Cooktown area. The European model, thanks to Weather Underground, we can see here Wednesday night, 10pm, this system is a weak tropical cyclone, or very likely to be a weak tropical cyclone, just off the coast here of Cooktown. This is Cooktown right in there. Uh, we see some gale force winds possible anywhere north of around about Innisfail, uh, all the way up into the centre of the system. And in fact, you probably, believe it or not, going to see the strongest winds, if this remains a fairly loose-ish tropical cyclone, you're going to see the heaviest winds a fair way south of the system centre by the looks of that on the computer model guidance. Now, as, as we get to Thursday, 4pm, you can see it's just hovering here, just on the coast. Once again, it doesn't really matter if it hits the coast or not in that situation. The, the actual system effects being that close to the coast are going to be identical as if the system had made landfall anyway. So whether you're starting to look at technicalities or not, I don't think it really matters if it's that close to the coastline as the model suggests. So as you can see, this orange shading here is 25 to 35 knots. Um, and then as we get into this darker orange, you can just see this little splotch there off the, co off the, off the coast of Mossman. Uh, that's around 35 to 40 knot wind. So we're talking a Category 1, significant Category 1 tropical cyclone there as uh, the system gets close to Princess Charlotte Bay. It sort of meanders about for a little while and then starts to intensify as it pushes off the coast. Now we're not going to 
talk about the steering mechanism so that that's something we talk about with the subscribers uh, for those that want the more in-depth updates uh, we will talk a bit more about why it's predicting this sort of track to happen in the longer term but you can see here that the system uh, certainly intensifies into quite a strong tropical cyclone as we get in towards the latter part of the weekend and into early next week and that is something that the computer models do agree with even though they push it in vastly different uh, vastly different directions um, at a vastly different time frame they all tend to agree that we're probably looking at a fairly significant system so this is next Monday afternoon on the GFS and you can see here it's already hit New Caledonia uh, and you can see uh, once again a very intense system category 3 possible maybe a little bit more all right, over to WA, and with, here's our little low. It's already starting to form, and we saw that on satellite at the start of this broadcast. And if we track this through over the next 24 hours and just have a look at what happens to it, uh, we can certainly see the rotation becoming more and more evident over the next 24 hours. And you can see by tomorrow night, we are looking at a fairly strong rotating tropical low here uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of good wind, good wind fetch here from the north. And we can see here that the monsoon from the north is, uh, is really cranking into the... Oi, what's happened there? We can see that the monsoon here is really cranking into the actual system from the north. Uh, it doesn't have too much coming in from the southwestern side, uh, so it doesn't have too much of a circulation going on here on the southwestern edge. But we certainly have a very strong monsoon coming in. That means we're getting a lot of moisture into the system, which is one of the key things that a lot of the Pilbara cyclones tend to lack. Uh, this is why a lot of the low pressure systems in this region don't actually become cyclones, is because they don't tend to have enough moisture over the top of them for long enough. Whereas this one is attached to a fairly strong monsoonal flow and therefore we would expect a lot of moisture advection into the centre of the system and therefore we can't see moisture as being a problem. Alrighty, so where's it going? Well, the UK Met believes it's going to track a little bit to the southeast. That's a little bit interesting. It's not. It's one of the only computer models that does that. And because it tracks it to the southeast, it also then has a landfall somewhere between Onslow and Exmouth on the 13th of March as a Category 2 tropical cyclone. The Canadians. The Canadians have got this also as a Category 1 or 2 tropical cyclone and once again getting right onto that northwest cape around Exmouth. Uh, they're expecting a landfall there and then a quick jut out to the west and then a secondary landfall around Shark Bay or Coral Bay. On the GFS forecast model, we see a track here to the south and then an eventual track here to the southeast. This is all to do with an upper level trough, and we'll talk about that with subscribers in the morning as well, about how that upper level trough will impact this system and what sort of weather effects this system would cause. But at this stage, the GFS is tipping this to be a fairly weak Category 1 cyclone on landfall. One of the key things you might notice that the, uh, this update compared to the last update is that more, si more computer models are predicting a landfall of this system and less computer models are predicting a landfall of the Queensland system. There is a slight difference in the track forward speed of this system. We see that Thursday night, the European has the system making a landfall as a Category 1 or 2 tropical cyclone right around that uh, northwest cape. And obviously by then, by around about Saturday, uh, sorry, Friday night and into Saturday uh, morning, we can see that the system then continues to track south and southeast, uh, leaving the northwest cape alone and then heading a lot further to the south, creating some strong and blustery winds, particularly on its eastern semicircle. That is a little bit different, not too much different, especially uh, when we're looking at this sort of lead time. We're pretty, con you know, that, that's pretty good agreement from the computer models. It's just the time frame. So here, rather than Thursday night, the GFS forecast model has the system approaching on Friday night. A little bit further offshore, but it's also a little bit of a larger system. Once again, it's a southern and eastern semicircle that will pack the biggest punch. And you can see here, gale force winds. Remember that orange colouring is gale force winds. The yellow colouring is strong wind warning winds. Uh, we can see those sort of winds there of 30 to 35 knots affecting the entire region around the weekend which isn't good for the uh, fishing uh, big fishing comp around that northwest cape area today uh sorry not today but on the weekend so this probably isn't a great situation for them even though expected to be at the lower end of category scales uh we are still expecting things to be uncomfortable on the water uh, probably prohibitively so if the GFS comes off, but certainly still uncomfortable even if the EC comes off and the system pushes south uh, a little bit quicker. 
Forecast rainfall tomorrow. No surprises where it's going to be. Up here, northwest Coral Sea. Out here, southeast Indian Ocean. A few showers elsewhere along the coastal strips. Very dry across the Northern Territory for this time of year. A lot of descending air on the back of both systems here. On the outside of this system and the outside of this system, we've got a lot of descending air coming over the top of the Territory. And we've got a fairly strong ridge in through here. So that's really poor stuff from the Northern Territory in terms of this wet season. Uh, we would certainly not expect that this time of year. As we go to Wednesday, we see northwest Coral Sea. Some of that really heavy rain starting to approach the coastline here. Probably not as heavy as we initially thought, uh, just purely and simply because the system might remain offshore for an extended period of time now. Uh, remember yesterday, most of the computer model guidance was, was tipping that cyclone to hit the coast. If that was going to be the case, we we're going to see huge falls of rain up here. But because the system, as we said last night, if the system stays just offshore, uh, we're going to see falls start to be scaled back to just general generalised heavy rain as opposed to huge flooding rain. Uh, over the southeast Indian Ocean, we continue to see that tropical low tracking to the south. On the Thursday, we see some of that rainfall now starting to approach the Pilbara coastline here, and also some of the heavier stuff now uh, hitting the Queensland coast on the Thursday as that tropical cyclone gets really close to landfall there. And we go into Friday and we see a continuation of fairly heavy rainfall pushing further to the north now. We've got a ridge coming in through Queensland which is going to dry things out further to the south. Anywhere south of the convergence line is going to be quite dry. Anywhere, anywhere on the convergence line and northwards is going to be very moist. Over to the West Pilbara, look at this. Huge rainfall amounts expected there. Huge for that area anyway. 50 to 100 millimetres is massive for that region. Now, remember this is the region around Onslow to Exmouth that copped a fair bit of rain just uh, less than a week ago from some heavy thunderstorm activity associated with the trough. So this is really going to exacerbate any uh, minor flooding that might have occurred from that particular system. So the cutoff line for, for any meaningful rain, folks, would be around about just north of Townsville would be the cutoff line. If you live south of there, you're probably not going to see too much out of this uh, Coral Sea system. But, you know, stranger things have happened. The cutoff line here would be anywhere west of Port Hedland, but particularly west of Caratha, if you want to see any sort of meaningful rainfall from the one here in WA. So they're the two real cutoff lines, I, I, would, I would suspect, from these two systems at this stage. So if you live east of Caratha, you're not going to see too much. If you live south of uh, maybe Rolling Stone, uh, you're not going to see too much from that either. If you're interested in the long-term stuff and you're interested in the why behind the what's going to happen, then I do encourage you to become an Oz Cyclone Chaser subscriber. Help us do what we do best, which is chase cyclones and document them. And in the same time, get some of the best information out there for cyclones. Head to our website, ozcyclonechasers.com.au slash subscribe. Thanks for watching this update. We'll have another national update for the public tomorrow night at around about 9 to 9.30 p.m. Queensland time. Thanks for watching. See you then.